Hello everyone, my name is Saliha Bayer. Um, I'm a PhD student at University of Kassel and my talk is about school vibrio symbiosis in microbial ecology. Um, this is a case study that I've recently started to develop to understand the material practices in microbial ecology and it's part of a larger project uh, that we will present at the poster session with Dr. Robert Manier. So for this talk, um, I will first um, demonstrate uh, the, the overview of how the school vibrio symbiosis work and the, the textbook demonstration that researchers use when explaining it and then I will give it give an historical overview of how uh, this story is developed in several steps over many decades and then I will um, <coughs> give an account of how these organisms are taken from um, their ecological environment and then transferred to a technological environment and turned into a laboratory experimental system. So, the Hawaiian bobtail squid Euprimnus colops lives in the coasts of Hawaii and is in a mutualistic association with the lum luminescent bacteria Vibrio fisheri. Here is how it works. Uh, squid provides nutrients and shelter to the uh, bacteria and in return it uses the bioluminescent proteins of the bacteria to camouflage itself from predators that are hypothesized to live beneath the level of the squid so the nocturnal bobtail squid can hide its shadow um, uh, caused by the light coming from moons and stars um, the symbiotic association is established in several steps um, the transmission happens horizontally through the environment so adult squids transmit this bacteria from the marine environment and not through the egg um, and it is acquired from the environment upon hatching and there is a specific city uh, of this mutualistic association upon um, thousands of bacteria that, has, that is found in the marine environment uh, specifically, uh, the squid chooses specifically to acquire this bioluminescent bacteria. So after the uh, mutualistic association is established, there is a daily uh, release cycle back into the environment every day. Um, after the, the function of the bioluminescent is finished, um, with the sunrise, squid releases 90 to 95 percent of the bacteria back into the ocean and then the remaining bacteria in the, the light organ exponentially grows until the next night. So this release uh, back into the ocean has a major impact on the distribution and abundance of this bacteria, which is found mainly uh, in the coast of Hawaii. And the symbiotic competent bacteria is only found around this, these coasts. So giving an historical overview, Stillman Berry in 1913 first introduces this, um, the, the squid eats collops to the scientific community. He provides sketches of the squid and descriptions of its natural habitat and some general information. And al almost six decades later, marine zoologists um, in Kivalo uh, Marine Laboratories, which is established specifically to find some wild marine animals and turn them into experimental systems, photograph, this is one, one of the animals that they photograph, document, and they also develop methods for the survival and rearing of the squid in laboratory conditions. And Singley then discovers that the squid is in a symbiotic relationship with uh, a bioluminescent bacteria, so the luminescence is not an inherent quality of the squid. And then they identified the bacteria as Vibrio fisheri and demonstrated it is horizontally transmitted and not vertically. And Metfolnaya and Ruby, who are main pioneers of um, the system and turning into a model um, association, works out the many details of the symbiotic association later on. So moving on um, to the tension of lab, lab field, field border, I aim to show how they identify um, certain ecological elements and isolate and transfer them to the lab. So color identifies uh, several differences between 
biological research conducted in the lab and in the field. And um, here I need two of them. Lab experimenters do not need to put up with the complexity of the environment of the organisms that they inquiry. Uh, they specifically design their experiments to be placeless, to be replicated in another location, whereas field biologists treat the habitat, weather, other biotic and abiotic factors in the natural environment as a part of their research. So place uh, matters in field research. Lab researchers have complete control over their experiments. They can study uh, their, their system in parts or in, as holes. They can repeat their experiments as many times as they like until they reach a certain um, statistical confidence. Whereas field researchers must cope with the given conditions and take into account that natural places are unique, which also makes their observations unique and unrepeatable. So here's how the transfer um, of these organisms start from, from the field. Uh, they take, they go at night to find a squid with a flashlight and a dip, dip net and collect adult and juvenile East Colops from the field in Hawaii. And the field called East Colops are then transported to local laboratories at the University of Hawaii. Um, after 1990s, they can then transfer uh, the organisms to further locations, the university labs in Northern America, and then recently even to France. And of course, scientists come across many difficulties in establishing um, and keeping these animals alive in the lab. First of all, uh, the main difficulty was the, un the um, lack of knowledge of a standard diet. They tried and failed many times to find um, a, a compatible diet for the squid. So they were losing the uh, um, animals between 10 to 15 days. After many trials, they found out in the lab conditions that um, squids were <coughs> voracious uh, predators that, that preferred uh, up to t uh, twice or four times their size prey. So they gave them a live shrimp to eat. And female squids are given, female squids are known to lay their eggs multiple times throughout their lives, unlike other mar some marine animals that die after laying eggs. So, but in the lab, scientists observe uh, the unwillingness of egg laying behavior of female squids, um, even though they have spermatophores that they can use to lay their eggs. Um, they're given hard plastic pieces, or if they can find uh, while doing collections that corals to lay their eggs on. And they put these in little aquaria. They develop an isolated representative uh, strain, Vibrio uh, fisheri ES114. Um, and the standard strain is shared with all the labs that research uh, these organisms. And the differences, uh, there are differences in the development between um, squids that are colonized by the standard strain <coughs> and the squids that are colonized by uh, bacteria that is taken from the natural environment. There, there's also differences uh, between squids, the development of squids between field, that are field caught and that are lab reared. So, um, in order to understand the bioluminescent behavior of the squid, they do laboratory measurements. They um, alter the intensity of room lights. And then they, to complement this research, they do some field measurements under, in Hawaii under uh, natural daylight. And they observe that field, in the field, uh, there is a longer period of elevated luminescence rhythm. And it is hypothesized that this is possibly a response to the rapid to light, dark, light to dark transition in the lab. So even though they, uh, do realize that t taking this animal into the lab um, has an impact on the bioluminescent behavior. The fact that they can still observe the difference is sufficient for them. And the hypothesis that squid uses the bioluminescence to evade predators by counter-illuminating the star and moonlight has not been tested. Um, even though they apply different light intensities and 
um, they measure the luminescent luminescence emitted from the squid um, and they, they do conclude that squid can adjust and control the bacteria uh, to adjust the level of luminescence whether, the, whether this behavior, this control over the luminescence has a fitness advantage is yet to be explored because they have not conducted any experiments with a, pred with a potential predator uh, in the lab. So a potential predator has never been put in the aquarium in the lab environment to uh, measure this. So it's just a hypothesis that um, bioluminescence is used by the squid to await predators. And the details to summarize, the details of the symbiosis is figured out in many steps over the last four decades. So the story of how it occurs became more detailed and refined over time. And in the narrative that I've given in the beginning, the binary nature of the symbiotic association is always emphasized. The impact over environmental bacteria, the impact of predator as an environmental pressure, or the impact of other um, abiotic factors are to a large extent disregarded uh, because they create an artificial lab environment which we might call in this context a techno environment and that is my